Sometimes a better solution to solving quadratics is to complete the square. Here's the quadratic that we're going to be solving. x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0. This quadratic can be solved by factorizing, but completing the square is still extremely useful, because you often run into quadratics that can't be factorized. Let's complete the square. We always start out by moving the number over to the right hand side, like this. Next we're going to turn the thing on the left, x squared plus 6, into something that looks like x plus a squared. In other words, we're going to factorize it into one single bracket that gets squared. This always involves halving the number in front of the x, which means that the 6 will get turned into a 3. Now we'd have to do this, x plus 3 squared minus 9 equals 7. Why has that minus 9 appeared on the right side? Well if you think about it, when we expand x plus 3 squared, we're actually going to get x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 7. That plus 9 should not be there, and so we've counteracted that by adding a minus 9 on the left side as well. So we next just move that minus 9 over to the right side, where it turns into a plus 9. x plus 3 squared equals 16. We're getting awfully close to the answer, even if it doesn't look like it just yet. If we now take the square root of both sides, we will get x plus 3 equals plus or minus 4. And for the final step, we just move the 3 over to the right side x equals negative 3 plus or minus 4. If you now want to know what the two solutions will actually be, then you can just add 4 to negative 3, and then take away 4 from negative 3, giving us the two solutions of 1 and negative 7. The reason that completing the square is so great is because lots of times you get quadratics that just don't seem to have any way of being factorized, like this one x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. There's no obvious set of two numbers that add to 1 and also multiply to 4, so we're going to be forced to abandon the factorizing method and complete the square instead. We'll move the 1 over to the right side. x squared plus 4x equals negative 1. Now we'll turn the left side into x plus 2 squared, which gives us this x plus 2 squared minus 4 equals negative 1. And then, by moving the negative 4 over to the right, x plus 2 squared equals 3. Great. Things are easy from here on out. We'll take the square root of both sides and then solve it. x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Since the square root of 3 is not a particularly nice number, we'll just leave it as the square root of 3 for the sake of a pretty answer. Finally, we have x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. The quadratic formula is like your get out of jail free card for quadratics. You don't always want to have to use it, but when things turn ugly, it's great for getting to the solution. The quadratic formula is a little like completing the square because it will tell you what the solutions to a quadratic are, but it won't factorize that quadratic for you. Firstly, recall that we can write out any quadratic like this. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So with that in mind, this formula will solve any quadratic for you. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2 times a. So, as long as you know what a, b, and c of your quadratic all are, you can just stick them into this formula and let your calculator do the rest of the work for you. When you use the quadratic formula, it's easy to make mistakes, so it really does pay to check your answers. Let's look at the kind of quadratic you'd use the formula for. 2.5x squared minus 6x minus 12 equals 0. 
none of these numbers are very nice, and we'd be sitting around for years if we tried to factorize it. If we didn't feel like completing the square, then we could simply plug these numbers into the quadratic formula. We know that a equals 2.5, b equals negative 6, and c equals negative 12. So the formula will look like x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times 2.5 times negative 12 divided by 5. And so x equals 3.7 and negative 1.3. So it obviously would have been pretty much impossible to get those numbers without either completing the square or using the formula like we did. Just keep in mind that when your a or b or c have negatives attached to them, using brackets on your calculator becomes especially important. We can always check our answers easily simply by taking our solutions for x, which are 3.7 and negative 1.3, and plugging them back into the original quadratic like this. 2.5 times 3.7 squared minus 6 times 3.7 minus 12 equals 0, so that answer is correct. And 2.5 times negative 1.3 squared minus 6 times negative 1.3 minus 12 equals 0 as well, so that answer is correct too. All of the quadratics that we've looked at so far have had two solutions. Because a quadratic is simply the equation for a parabola, the quadratic with two solutions will look like this if we graph it. So the graph will intersect the x-axis in two different places. We sometimes describe this quadratic as having two real roots or two distinct roots because the word root simply means solution. However, it's also possible for a quadratic to have one solution. Just look at this quadratic here. x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. If we were to factorize this and then solve it, we'd find that x plus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0, and thus x equals negative 2. Since both of the solutions are the same, there's really only a single solution. If we look at a graph situation of this, we'd see that the parabola only just touches the x-axis in a single place. And that intersect is going to be where x equals negative 2. We sometimes say in this situation that the quadratic has two equal roots because both of the solutions are the same. Which brings us to the final solution, which is where the quadratic has no solution at all. Like this one, for example. x squared plus 3x plus 6 equals 0. There is absolutely no way of solving this quadratic. On a graph, it means the parabola simply doesn't touch the x-axis at all, anywhere, like this. Here we'd say the quadratic has no real roots. There's actually a really fast way of determining what kind of roots a quadratic has, and it's called the discriminant, and it looks like this. Delta equals b squared minus 4ac. If we know a, b, and c of a quadratic, we can easily figure out what the discriminant is, because it'll just be a number. Here's what that number's going to mean. If the discriminant is positive, or b squared minus 4ac is bigger than 0, then there will be two distinct roots. If the discriminant is negative, or b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, then there will be no real roots. But if the discriminant is 0, or b squared minus 4ac equals 0, then there will be two equal roots. So we can use the discriminant to solve problems that ask about the roots of a quadratic, like this one. For what values of k will 2x squared plus kx plus 4 have two equal roots? In other words, what will k have to be so that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0? We can start this out with a simple equation, b squared minus 4ac equals 0. Now we replace a, b, and c with the things from our equation. a is 2, b is k, and c is 4. So 
k squared minus 4 times 2 times 4 equals 0. k squared minus 32 equals 0. So we can simply solve for k now by moving things over to the right side. k squared equals 32, and thus k equals plus or minus the square root of 32. That's all there is to it. Remember, we can expand a quadratic by multiplying everything in one bracket by everything in the other. Factorizing and solving quadratics requires finding a common factor. Difficult quadratics can be solved by completing the square. We can also solve quadratics using the quadratic formula. The discriminant reveals how many real roots a quadratic has.